everyone welcome to modern application development part 2 now finally let's look at one topic which is very important and has been stressed upon multiple times throughout this course at different uh, stages which is testing right how do you test what a given component can or cannot do for example right now testing view applications can be done in a few different ways there is of course the unit testing which should be done just as with any other software process right and if you think about it a component in view right by definition more or less is probably a good thing level at which to unit test okay and but the question is how do you test a component right because after all components are heavily visually oriented meaning that they are modifying the dom they are actually inserting elements into the dom they are displaying error messages they are you know certain uh, things get seen only under certain conditions and so on right but the interesting thing is the test mechanisms in view allow you to sort of mount the entire component into what's called a testing dom right it's a virtual dom a document object model where you can inject certain kinds of data into the system and get different kinds of behavior associated with it right we'll take a look at that not actually running it in the code but you know we'll take a look at that briefly uh, how that would look now in addition to the unit testing there is also so called end to end testing where you actually need to test the full application right including the back end and how it behaves under certain cases this is similar to what you would do with a flask application right you need to be able to create a dummy test database you need to be able to create requests you need to see how the system behaves under practical use cases now there is also one more part which actually needs to be tested which is since view deals with the front end you also probably need to test for cr cross browser behavior right does it work only with chrome does it work only with firefox does it require a specific version of chrome or firefox or edge or safari in order to work right how do you sort of handle that now at some point this sort of gets you into a stage of diminishing returns because maintaining full backwards compatibility with all older browsers is nearly an impossible task so you need to take a call at some stage right you have the option of either saying you know this program this app will only work with certain versions of certain browsers or you could at least use some kind of you know a compiler like babel to resolve those difficulties to some extent and you know push the problem there as long as babel is able to generate code for different systems they should work reasonably well it does raise the question about whether the babel compiler itself is completely accurate right in other words let's say you write a specific kind of code and the babel compiler translates it into something else are they both doing exactly what you had originally intended okay but it's that's true of any compiler right so it's a call that you have to take and decide is this the approach that you want in terms of achieving your final compatibility requirements so test mechanisms in view are just like the test mechanisms that we would have for example in python unit test right you can set up fixtures with prepared data right you can have a test suite that collects several tests together right and maybe perhaps these are several tests that in turn are testing one particular component right now the test utilities from view also provide interfaces to a number of tools right so there are tools such as mocha chai jest and so on which are supporting functions they basically allow you to check for the presence or absence of certain elements and to write the tests themselves in a way that are almost self documenting and easy to understand okay so finally let's take a look at some examples of what unit testing view components would uh, be like but we are not really going to run through these because in order to actually run these examples you need to have the entire you know cli and everything else set up which at least for this present uh, video i'm not going to cover those aspects of it so once again going back to the cookbook you know there's quite a lot of detail on what unit testing view components looks like now since i am not actually going to run this code what i want to focus on over here is the concepts how would you actually go about testing a component that is going to get you know displayed on a screen and of course you know the 
component itself looks something like this, right? It's, it's a very trivial thing. It's basically a hello component. And what it says is there is an error, which is a computed function, which says that unless the username is at least seven characters long, it's going to basically set this error parameter to be uh, true. Okay, and well, not true, it's going to either have this or an empty string. Okay. Now, in the code itself of the component, right, it basically says that if error is present, right, it sets the class error and displays this message. Okay. And that's pretty much all that it does, right. Uh, it has something for the input uh, username. And if the username does not match the requirements, because after all, this is computed, right, which means that any time that username changes, after all, we have got a two way binding, right, because of this V model, the moment I type any character change username, I will find that this computed error value changes. And until I have crossed seven characters, it will basically say, please enter a longer username. And that message will show up out here. Okay. Now, how would I test something like this, right? What we could do is ultimately when I'm testing in practice, what I would do is I would probably bring up the page, look at what it displays. It should have an input component, right? Okay, so far so good. That looks like a test. At least the component should have an input. Uh, but in addition to that, there is also this thing of what am I going to do with the variables that are present in the JavaScript, right? And the test that I could have over there could, for example, be what happens is if the username is empty. What do I expect the output to look like? I should see that there is a div with error in it. Okay. I could also say maybe I need to look for the error message, which is, you know, please enter a longer username, right? But I have to choose. I mean, you know, probably doesn't make sense to look for both. Maybe if I just look for whether this class error is present on a div somewhere in this module, that is good enough, actually. Okay. So, Let's look at what the test utility looks like. It imports something called shallow mount from view test utils, right? So the view test utils is what's called the official view testing library, right? It provides a number of different functions that allow you to write tests for view components. Shallow mount is something which sort of emulates the process of mounting a component within a actual DOM, right? So it is effectively, in other words, what happens when I do this const wrapper equals shallow amount of hello is I have created a kind of DOM, right, where this component hello has been mounted. Now I can do things like I should be able to set the data username, right, to some value over here, okay. And what happens is when I wrapper dot set data username and I'm setting it, you know, I'm basically giving it a name which is seven characters, but those characters are spaces, which is basically going to be rejected. Okay. So what happens is that when I set wrapper to this seven spaces, I should find that I should expect that inside the wrapper, I should be able to find one element at least with the dot error class associated with it. Okay. So look at the way that the test is written. Expect wrapper dot find dot error exists, right? And the whole thing to be true. So expects this to be true. Okay. Now this kind of behavior is sort of what you will find in a number of, you know, different uh, libraries that support testing, right? They are helping you to write your test in a way that looks reasonably easy to read. Okay. So when I read this line, I can sort of figure out what it's trying to check. Expect that you know, inside the wrapper, I should find dot error, it should exist. And I expect that to be true. Right. Now, you can go further and basically say, you know, now what happens, change the data, right, to an actual seven character name. And at this point, I should find that the dot error is false. Right. So if you think about it, you know, what is happening is this is a single test. Right, because it's after all defined as a single test out here. But it's testing two things, right? It's also it's testing whether the you know when the name is less than seven characters, is it turning out to be uh, true? And if it's more than seven character, more than or equal to seven characters, does it go away? Okay. The point is that writing such a test becomes, at least you know now you can sort of understand how you might go about testing it, 
right? So let's say you're writing a weather uh, display component, right? Uh, you should be able to inject a certain set of cities into it and sort of see what the display looks like. Does it actually have the cards corresponding to each of those? Uh, you know, call an update function on one of those and then see what happens, right? Does it actually get the data? What happens when you call it with an invalid city name, right? All of those things could be automated, those test processes, right? And, you know, this page also says why test, which hopefully at this point, you know, most of you are convinced that testing is a good thing, right? So I'm not going to go into that anymore. Now, of course, there is more that can be done with this, right? Which is that the ex uh, the next example that they have basically says that, you know, you could have something which has like multiple different tests put in one place over here. But a better way of doing it is actually to break it out into a suite of tests, right? So you have one test which is defined by it and this other one which is another it, another it and so on, right? And this is I mean, why this particular name it and so on, it's just something which supposedly helps with helps with readability maybe it does right it depends on what you find to be comfortable and easy to understand but when you look at these things it, one thing that's sure is you know if tests are written this way it's fairly easy to sort of figure out what they are trying to do right so you go through this entire process and you could go even further you could even make api calls or you know have like uh, uh, further things that are done with, well, Vuex is not something that we have covered so far, but we will be looking at in one of the screencasts at least later, right? Testing interaction, which means that you can actually generate clicks and input events and various other things and different parts of the, uh, essentially the component, okay? So, like I said, in order to actually implement and demonstrate all of this, you need to have it with the CLI implemented. The reason why I have brought it up over here is first thing to show that such a thing can be done within the view framework. Secondly, how would you go about, you know, testing? What are the things that you can test? Typically, it would be are certain elements present in the DOM? And the good thing is that, you know, the test utilities allow you to set or change the values of certain JavaScript variables and run tests corresponding to those, you know, different kinds of behaviors, right? It's also possible to construct more complicated tests that depend on multiple parts of the state of the system, right? And all of those ideally should be done. You need to have a good set of tests so that you are reasonably comfortable that your component works in all the scenarios that you might have thought of.